Hey guys, good morning. It is February, um, Thursday, February 27th. We are back at school today. Today we will be reviewing um, how to multiply fractions by whole numbers for a test tomorrow. So while some of you are working independently or with a partnership, I will be meeting with small groups of people to go over some things for tomorrow's test. Yes, we were having a test, even though we missed yesterday due to a snow day. So right now you should be working independently if you're watching this video. You need your textbook open to page 48. And we're going to go over a few problems on each of these pages. So go ahead and hit pause if you have not got your red book out and turn to page 48 right now so you can get ready. Okay guys, so we're on page 48 and we are going to work through the one of the first set of problems. So number one on page 48, the directions say convert each improper fraction to a mixed number. Our first problem is seven over two. What they want you to do is they want you to regroup. And you know when we regroup, it means that we take our numerator and we put it inside of a division house and then we take our denominator and we put it outside. Um, we then ask ourselves how many times will two go into seven without going over. And I know that two times two is four, two times three is six, two times four is eight. Eight is too much so that must mean that I need to use three. That means that two goes into seven three whole times. Two or three times two is six. Subtract six. I get one. Now I have three new numbers to work with. They are three, two, and one. Well, whatever is on top of the of the um, house will always be my whole number. Our denominator doesn't change. It's the same here and the same here. Two and what's left over goes on top. One, three and one half. Now, that doesn't mean we're done. We still need to check this fraction to see if we can simplify, which means we have to find the GCF. So let's find our factors of one and two. Well, one times one is the only thing that gives us one. One and two, if we're two, there are no matches because one doesn't count. So this indeed, friends, right here, three and one half is our final answer. Make sure you have this work written down in your book. Now also too, um, you need to show your work for one, two, three, and four. You can do it in your book or on a separate sheet of paper, but the answer needs to be written on the line in the book. Go ahead and hit pause and work through two, three, and four. And on, the, on my next screen, I'm gonna be working on number five on page 48. Okay. Number five on page 48, the directions say write each fraction in its simplest form. So simplest form means to find the GCF. We're going to be finding the GCF for number five with the fraction three ninths. So three and nine. One and three gives you three. One, three, and nine are all things that we can multiply together to get nine. You see there is a match. It's right there. It's three. So when we use the GCF, it means divide. So you take three ninths, divide the top by three and the bottom by three, and you get one over three. Because three divided by three is one, nine divided by three is three. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause. I need you to do six, seven, and eight by yourself. Um, like I said, you need to show your work either in the book or on paper, but the final answer needs to be written in your book. My next problem I'm going to be doing is number 49 on page 9. And um, go ahead and hit pause, like I said, and do the rest of them on page 48 before you move to 49. Okay, so here we go on 49. You have a whole number, 4 times 2 thirds. And it says in the directions, find the product in the simplest form, show your work. So if you remember, our steps for this is to simply put the whole number over one to make a fraction. That's step one. Step two is multiply across. OK, 
okay? So let's do that. Four times two is eight. One times three is three. Now you know that this is improper and we must regroup, okay? So when we regroup, that means we take our denominator, put it outside of a division house, put the numerator in. How many times will three go into eight? Well, three times one's three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, nine's too big, so the biggest we can go with six, it goes in twice, two times three is six, minus six, you get two. So you now have these leftover numbers right here. Remember, the number on top is always our whole number. So we're gonna have two, our denominator doesn't change. So denominator's three, and what's left over, two goes on top. So we get two and two thirds, but we're not done because two and two thirds, we need to check to see if we can simplify this. When we simplify, we have to find the GCF, two and three. Well, what can I multiply together to get two? One and two, what can I multiply together to get three? One and three. So one doesn't count, so there are no matches. So two and two thirds is our final answer. Okay, guys, that's a super quick review. I need you to make sure that you're working on numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, okay? You can work these out on your own paper or in the book, but you need to show your answer on the blank in the book, okay? Um, again, there will be a test tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Thank you for working independently. I will talk to you in class. Goodbye.